and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you so dearly for always supporting us. I really do appreciate. If this is the first time you are coming across this wonderful family, or you are seeing my face for the first time, I still remain Agatha Progress, bringing it to you back to back. Remember, we react to our videos and our opinion is highly needed. So just sit back and watch this video and I will be right back. I, I'm greatly troubled, greatly worried that the prediction some years ago that Nigeria will become a failed state has actually come to pass. Some of the indices of a failed state are when non-state actors possess equal or stronger or more potent power than a legitimately constituted government. Power of violence, instruments of coercion and violence, as we are saying now, that's one of the greatest signs of a free state. One of the other greatest signs is when the failed state is looking like Amoeba, Amoebic, that is formless, shameless. In the secondary school, we were taught biology. I still remember um, uh, Spirogira. I still remember Paramitsu, Candantu, and Amoeba Protus. And then uh, Spirogira, a green filamentous algae. What we are seeing in Nigeria is that the country itself has become amoebic, in which case formless. It's in a state of void, the type of void that God beheld before he breathed life into everything that came in. Chief, so people are we are, the we are really not, failing. we are really not, we are really not conjured as a state. People are saying the country is failing. Are you categorically stating that it has failed? It's failed. It's failed. Listen, when from Kagara to Kankara, from Jangebe to Chibok to Dapchi, people to Kaduna, people are being picked up like lizards every day and being killed or taken hostage or kidnapped. You in these perilous times continue to speak up, heavens will not fall. Like one person ever once told me, if the heavens fall, it will fall on all of us, but it's never going to fall. Nigeria nationhood cohesion do we have one? I know we don't have one. Nigeria is still yearning for nationhood after. Her independence since 1960. Perhaps one of the greatest fault lines we have is the way itself by which we came together, cobbled together by Lord Lugard on the 1st of January 1914. Perhaps one of the most fought, strong, I mean, or the strongest fault lines is the way we were even named when we were formally called Royal Niger company protectorates and one young lady felt that name was too long and she wrote an article in the London Economic Times on the 8th of January 1897 I said we should call that country that area around the Niger Niger area which was why how we came by the by the name Nigeria we didn't really agree that we were going to be one country the Berlin West African conference of about 1844 to 18 45 merely partitioned West Africa amongst the Portuguese, the Germans, the, the English people, and all that. So it was not as if we agreed to come together as one nation, which is why everyone is still suspicious of the other one. We already had the Hausa city states, the Igbo city states, the Karen Bonu Empire. Remember, we had great kingdoms. The Oyo Empire, the Bini Empire, remember the great role of Oba, Oba, 
Ovarami Nogbaise, the man who told the British, don't visit Benin during that holy month in December of 1897. And the British said they must visit. And of course, the guards who were in charge of the moat seized them and killed them. That was what led to the infamous Benin punitive expedition of 1898, February, led by a British who led 1,200 troops. Didn't we know about people like great kings like Oba or like um, King Jaja of Opobo? They were already there. Moremi, Queen Idia. So, we had our set ways of life and we were happy before the British came with their mercantilism, holding the Bible in one hand and, of course, slave trade on the other hand. A trade that was to ravage us for over 500 years before people like William Wilberforce, Thomas Clarkson, even our own Olaudo Equiano stepped in. And before the great American, Abraham Lincoln, on the 19th of November, 1863, abolished slave trade, for which, of course, it was promptly uh, executed in 1865. So the problems have been there. That is why no Nigerian believes I am a Nigerian. If you ask me, I, I will say I'm from Ijukwe, a small village near Adenibode, in Esako, East Local Government Area of Edo State. Because unlike what President Kennedy once told the Americans, think not of what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Nigerians ask themselves, what has Nigeria done for us that we are in turn expected to do much for her? That is why I go around Abuja or Lagos or any city in Nigeria on Sundays and you see the various town unions because the people believe more in their town unions, in their village enclaves than that contraction called Nigeria, which is practicing unitarianism rather than federalism. And my bishop brother narrated the history very well. The American Revolution, the independence of 17. Um, uh, 76, and of course, the Philadelphia Convention between May and September 1787, where they decided to have a more perfect union with 50 confederates coming together. They were already confederates, but they needed to have a more perfect union. It was that convention, at that convention, that they agreed on certain irreducible minimas of government. Federalism, presidentialism, the doctrine of separation of powers, which had earlier in 1748 been popularized by the great French philosopher Baron de Montesquieu. It was at that conference or convention they agreed on the doctrine of judicial review. It was at that conference that Washington himself was thrown up, who became the first president of America. It was at that conference you had the great federalists like Alexander Hamilton, John James, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, great Americans that wrote the American Constitution, which today had just about 20, I think about 27 amendments and about 7,891 words, unlike our Constitution, which is as big as a briefcase and is unworkable because it is not the people's Constitution. Now, what happened at that conference is that the people decided to come together to believe in a document, in a constitution, which was people-driven. After the 50 states came together, 36 states, and then subjected it to a referendum. So I've always asked the question, why is Nigeria, why are we afraid of that word referendum when we hear of a referendum, plebiscite? Did it we do it here at least? in 1963, on the 10th of August, when the Midwest region was separated from the Western region to become the fourth 
region in Nigeria. So, referendum is not something we should be afraid of. The process by which a constitution comes into being is even more important than the contents of that constitution, which is why Nigeria derived the present constitution of 1999 that is actually decree number 24 of 1999. So the American constitution was people-driven, unlike the Nigerian constitution, there was a militarily imposed constitution. It can never enjoy the legitimacy, the credibility, the believability, and the autochthony of the people, because it is not autochthonous. It, it, is, it is not people-driven. So Egypt did it. They had their own constitution. Iraq, Iran, after a referendum, Kenya, South Africa, Morocco, Tunisia, Eritrea. Why can't we have our own constitution? It is not that it will solve all the problems, but it will be the beginning of the solution to the problems so that that mutual respect will come in. We cannot have national coercion in a state of inequity in a state of social injustice, in a state of religious intolerance, in a state or a situation where some people believe they are born to rule and others are born to serve as clappers and as hewers of wood and drawers of water. Let me end, sir. Since you are warning me, the way late MKO Abiola put it, I always like to mimic him. Great Nigerian who won the presidency but was murdered and he never reigned for one day. He said, you, you, you cannot be, begin to talk about uh, peace. There, there are different types of peace. In fact, the most peaceful place on earth is the graveyard, the, the cemetery. But, but that is not the kind of peace we want. The, the kind of peace we are talking about is peace that is imbued with, with social justice, uh, egalitarianism, uh, mutual respect, religious tolerance, uh, ethnic tolerance. This is a very brief question. What has Nigeria done for you that in return you are expected to do more for her? Mr. and Mrs. One Nigeria, if not for the leaders of yesterday that Nigeria has done something for through their looting spirit, stealing, they are readers, they are not leaders. They are the only proud Nigerians. They are the only people that Nigeria have done something for. Not me and you. So my wonderful family, do well to like this video, share and subscribe if you haven't. I still remain Agatha Progress, bringing it to you from the new legal council of His Excellency Mazina Adikan, blowing it hot again for Nigerians to hear. All right, my wonderful family, see you when I see you. From me to you, I say bye.